Uh, my girlfriend, the aspiring model. I'll rush through the generic intro. I'm dating the girl of my dreams. We've been exclusive for three months, but I've been dating for a total of eight months. She's gorgeous. Her beauty has no boundaries. I've been in other serious relationships before, but none quite like this. I'm truly in love with my best friend, like something Nicholas Sparks. Well, who's that? Now I got to look that up. He says, yada, yada, yada. You get the gist. All right. I got to look this up. Houston Oilers. Nicholas Sparks. Oh, God. I f- He's a novelist. I didn't, well, I wouldn't have, well, no wonder I didn't know who it was. The guy writes books. All right, hang on a second. Merry Christmas to all my friends and readers. Okay, he's a, he's a, he writes books. Nicholas Sparks is one of the world's most beloved storytellers. All his books have been New York Times bestsellers. Jesus Christ. And I don't even, I, I, back in the day, I knew who the, I would know about a guy like this. There's just no more bookstores. Um, ah, he's got a sweater over a button-down shirt. He's leaning up against a fucking pole on a dock. I mean, this guy is a quality human being. Nicholas Sparks is one of the world's most beloved storytellers. All of his books have been New York Times bestsellers with over 105 million copies sold worldwide in more than 50 languages, including 75 million in the United States alone. Sparks wrote one, also a male... Sparks wrote one of his best-known stories, The Notebook. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I get what you're saying. You're like living a chick flick. Okay. I get it now. All right. Um, Something Nicholas Sparks shit out. Okay. So I guess he he puts out a lot of product. Um, Anyway, she's an aspiring model and pretty good at her craft. Her and the camera get along great. Anyway... Her lack of experience has her still getting offers from unknown photographers. In particular, a guy she's done a few shoots with in the past. This time, he wants to shoot nude and without pay. Fuck no. Obviously, I have a problem with this. I want her. She doesn't need to be naked. Don't do that. I want. I want her to pursue her passion, but this in particular doesn't sit right with me. I've never met this guy. He's not paying her to shoot. And what's her reasoning for wanting naked pictures of my girl? I've watched enough Jerry Springer and Forensic Files not to trust it. Definitely. She talked to me, wanting my blessing, which makes me feel worse. I told her my unease about it, but in the end, I trust her and will be okay if she goes ahead. She wants to model, so I'll have to get over things like this. No, you don't. But right now, it's a tough pill to swallow. Any advice or comic relief you could provide would be appreciated. Thanks and go fuck yourself. No, fuck this piece of shit. And then he's going to sell these these naked photos of her when she fucking gets somewhere. This guy's a piece of shit. He's not even giving her cab fare to get over there. No. Fuck this guy with his artistic nude shots. This guy's a fucking creep. He's going over to her apartment. That guy is a fucking creep. He's a fucking creep. He's going to jerk off to the pictures. Okay? Any first year fucking cop would tell you that. All right? You got to go worst case scenario here, dude. Fuck this guy. All day long. You have to tell your, 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 your girlfriend that, you know, being a, being a model doesn't mean getting naked. You don't have to do that shit. That's just fucking creepy shit. There's no fucking reason ever for them to do that shit. Ever. Give me a scenario why they would have to be naked. They're a fucking model. You're modeling clothes. You're standing next to a refrigerator being like, wow, I, you know, it, what, I really like that refrigerator now because that woman's so beautiful. You don't have to fucking sit there with your tits and your clam out. What the fuck is that for? Why? Why does she have to be naked? Jesus Christ, a fucking two-piece bathing suit's going to show pretty much everything. No, I, I would say no. I, I would say I, I got a bad feeling that this is going to come back. I want you to have a great career. This is going to come back and bite you in the ass. Your bare ass. All right? This, you're going over to this guy's apartment. He's not paying you, and you have to get naked, and he's taking photos. And this is somehow going to further your career. He's going to, what, send these fucking photos around? Your parents are going to see him. This is a bad fucking move. Say what I just said without the angers in the F word. 
All right, worst dessert. Dear Billy Baker Balls, uh, my aunt makes a peppermint cake every year, and every year I look at it like, why would anyone want a cake that tastes like toothpaste? Was wondering if you had strong feelings about any desserts that have crossed your holiday table. Merry Christmas to you and your two angels. Ah, let's see here. I don't like coffee, so I don't like anything coffee-flavored. Um... I don't like marshmallow. I don't like s'mores. Uh, yeah, I don't like anything with marshmallows. I don't like uh, I don't like candy in my cookies, like M M&M and M cookies or Snicker bar crunches. Like that's just this unholy fuck. It's like you're you're already eating a cookie. Do you got to jam a fucking? I don't like any of that. I don't like ice a scoop of ice cream with a cookie. I'm either going to have ice cream or we're going to have a fucking cookie. I'm really not going to have any of that shit anymore because I kind of got sugar out of my life, although the holidays has come back a little bit. The first time you have something with sugar after you haven't been eating it, you're like, dude, what the fuck is this? It's terrible. It's terrible for you. Um, but I, I like pie. I don't mind a little whipped cream on my pie or, I mean, an a la mode, you know? I don't mind shit like that. Ah, fuck. My wife told me to make a pie. Ah, Christ. Never ends, does it? When will it ever end? When will it ever end? Who, who's that? The Kingston. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Remember that? Where have all the something gone? A long, long time ago. The Kingston Trio. Yeah, I'm not into marshmallows. I'm not into fucking coffee-flavored anything, and I don't like... Uh, I love the way coffee smells, though. Uh, and I don't like... Uh, yeah, I don't like incestuous desserts where the fucking cookie fucks the candy or the candy gets inside the cookie. It's just... it's just. I mean, that's just for super, super, super fat people. Um, that's like their speedball. Like it's not enough to do heroin or just do coke. You gotta, you gotta fucking do a speedball. You know. Um, speaking of which, how about that Aerosmith song "Combination"? Huh? Isn't that a great song? Walking on Gucci, wearing East Saint Laurent, barely stay on, cause I'm so goddamn gone. Um, Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club has. I already talked about this, right? Did I? I think I did. Yeah, my bookie already did that. Oh, I did both the reads. Oh, that's right. I was doing the uh, shitty new boss. What a what a way to start the year. Worst dessert. Oh, that's it. Am I done? I can't be done. That's only oh fifty one fifty one. It was almost fifty one fifty. Um. Anyways, you know what sucks is we didn't do our holiday card until late this year. You got to do it right on Thanksgiving. That's what my buddy told me last night. The great Al Madrigal let me know. That man does everything right. Um, all right, let's see what I can bullshit about for the next few minutes here. Oh, God, yeah, I was at this fucking party last night. I can't say the comedian's name. I'll, I'll tell it someday on his podcast. So I'm at, this, I'm at this holiday party last night. Last night was a great party, by the way. Um, I had a a fucking awesome time at that, you know, to the point I was one of the last people to go. And, um, uh, there was a comic there and he had lost like 20 pounds and he was already skinny. So he's like, yeah, I lost 20 pounds. I'm fucking psyched. Right. And he's one of those people that he then keeps tabs on everybody else. So he sees me go over to the buffet and I got like four shrimp and I got a bunch of lettuce. It's like salad or whatever. And he's looking at me, he goes, that's all you're eating. And I knew it was fucking with him because he's one of those people like in, in, in order for him to feel good about being in shape, other people have to be a little out of shape. You know, he's got, the, I, oh God, I wish he would be laughing, right? I'm not being a dick to him. He loves this shit, right? So he goes, that's all you're eating. And I was, I knew what the fuck he was doing. I was just like, yeah, man, I go, I can't eat that other stuff, man. I'll have to take a nap. So long story short, we're there for like four hours and I get fucking hungry. So my wife, you know fixed herself a nice plate and I saw she had a slider. I'm like, oh God, I'd love one of those. So I fucking go up and I go to the, uh, this is like fucking two, two and a half hours after I talked to him about eating the lettuce and the shrimp, right? 
And I grab a slider and I'm reaching for a quesadilla, like a little triangle of quesadilla. And I just hear this guy way off across the room. There you go. There you go, Burr. There you go. Right? And I know it's him. So I'm like, this motherfucker, this guy, right? So I deliberately ignored him because I wanted to see how fucking important it was for him to rub it in that I was eating bad. And there was a bunch of people talking and it was loud. So I deliberately turned and walked towards him and I was looking down at the plate and he's going louder. There you go. There you go, Burr. There you go. There you go. Like that. And I fucking looked up and I put my hand on his shoulder and I was like, dude, I heard you the first time. I just wanted to see how much joy you would get. Dude, he was crying laughing. 